In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to fish boilies and pellets. Now, with most lakes across the country, whether that's day ticket waters or syndicates, are only allowing boilie and pellet fishing only. Now, it's not a case of just putting boilies out of your bag or your pellets and just chucking them straight into the lake. There's plenty of things you can do to put more fish onto the bank. And I'm going to be showing you my best tips of how to boilie and pellet fish. When it comes to boilies and pellet fishing you look at that there and it just feels a little bit dull doesn't it you know that i'm not saying that's not going to catch you fish but there's plenty of things that you can do with these two items here just to give you that little bit more of an edge now one of the approaches that i've gone in with at this venue that we're currently at is this right here so you can see that is totally different from your bulk standard boilies and pellets but that's all that's in that mix there. Now, all I've done is I've mulched up some 18 mil boilies so that they are, they've basically turned into quite, sort of, you've got a lot of vibrous bits in there. You've got big, sort of flaky parts of the 18 millers as well as fine dust and crumb as well. Now, along with that, I've added two different flavors of boilies. Now, this is another thing that I don't think a lot of people do. Most people have got their own boilie that they like using. I feel if you go in with an approach on a boilie and pellet venue, where you've got two different types of boilies in there, again, that's just giving you that extra percentage and it's something a little bit more different from the guy next door. So what I've basically done with this mix is, like I said, I've crumbed up some 18 mil boilies. I've also put pellets in there, but crushed some pellets as well. So you've got a few different sizes there. Now, you can get pellets which come in different sizes in different bags. You can have four mil pellets, eight mil pellets. You, there's a variety of sizes that you can use. So again, having them different size food items will also give you that edge a little bit more, I feel. So as you can see, that's quite a claggy mix that's there. If I sort of crush that in my hands, it almost stays in a ball shape like so. Now that's because I've added some liquids to this. Now I've added two different types of liquids. One is a hydro spod syrup, which is a very heavy, thick, gloopy liquid, which combines all of that crumb together, which gives you that clagginess within your mix. Now what that'll also do is, whether you're spodding it out or using a bait boat like we are here, it'll actually get that fine crumb down to the bottom of the lake bed. Whereas if you didn't have liquids on there, that fine crumb may just end up getting drift away. If you've got a bit of a wind on the venue, that crumb might get pushed away from your spot. Out in the pond at the moment, there's aerators out there at the minute. So you've always got that undertow, that little bit of movement. And I know full well that having that liquid into that mix is going to make not only that crumb heavier but get it down to the bottom of the lake bed over where i'm fishing my rigs now i've also added a liquid food to this as well this makes the mix very sticky as well so adding them two different types of liquids not only gives you that little bit of an edge again but it also gives you that sticky clagginess to ensure that all of that liquid gets to the bottom of the lake bed with this mix the actual venue that we're fishing is called credence fishery it's in dagnum and this is a lake exclusive at the weekend. So if you wanna book the whole lake for the weekend, you can bring your mates down. There's four cabins on site. One of the cabins is a double swim, so five of you can come along. And then if you wanna fish it on your own, you have to do that midweek. So from Monday to Wednesday on a 48 hour session, you can book it yourself, or from Wednesday to Friday, you can book it as well. Now the lake itself is about, two and a half acres in size there's around 130 fish in here which go up to around the 40 pound mark now that fish hasn't been caught in over a year and it was at 38 pound the last time that fish was caught it is a scaly banger absolutely gorgeous this fish is as well as all the other stock that are in here they're very scaly they're very lovely and they're definitely my sort of carp 
make sure you stick around to the end of this film to be in with a chance of winning a set of free camo mini micron x alarms these are brand new to the market they also come with a receiver as well so stick around to the end of this film to be in with a chance of winning a set so with boily fishing itself, what you'll find a majority of anglers do is they just use one flavour of bait. Now, if you mix them up a little bit, again, that's just doing something a little bit different from what most people do in their angling. Now, what I've got here is two different, not only colours, but flavours themselves. I've got, with the darker one there, that's a bug, which is like the insect meal. And then the lighter coloured one there, that's a switch, which is a pea protein bait. So two totally different baits there, which again, will just give you that little bit of a difference from what everyone else is doing. Now, sizes, you can mix up sizes a little bit. I've got in with the eight millers here. Eight mils, this sort of time of year, it's a little bit cold, is a good bait sort of size to go in with that I feel for my own angling. But putting 14s, 18s, 15s, 12s, you know, mixing the sizes up, that can give you that little bit of a difference as well from, again, what everyone else is doing. Now, when it comes to bait boat fishing, what most people do is they'll put their bait into the bait boat, they'll drive it out to their spot, dump their bait, that's it. You know, they won't bother thinking outside the box a little bit. Now, one of the things that I've done on the middle rod is I've gone out with the bait boat, with the bait inside, like you would normally do, drop the bait down, rigs down there, it's all perfect. Now the fish are seeing that a lot. Around the lake, they're probably seeing that majority of the time because most people are obviously using bait boats. What I've done is I've gone round to where the bait boat was, which is just off of the aerator. I've taken these round, these eight millers, and I've just sprayed a few around in the area. So I've made a bigger baiting patch which again is just something that's gonna be different from what most people would do when they're using a bait boat. Instead of having just that one clump sat there, I've actually sprayed four or five pouches of these eight millers around the area, just to make that, that little bit more of a difference, again, from what most people do whilst fishing with a bait boat. Well, we've spoken about some of the different things that you can do with boilies. Now, there's a few things that you can obviously do with pellets as well. One of them things being these little bags of beauties that I've got in my hand here. Now, obviously, mesh bags, mesh pellets, you know, it's, it's not nothing revolutionary or anything. But again, that, that's something that a lot of people use. They tend to hook one of them onto their rig, fire it out in the pond, and it does get your bites. But one thing you can do is bait up with these and that's something again that not a lot of people i see doing is having these little parcels of bait in your area you can definitely get them fish moving around a little bit more they're just little mouthfuls of parcels but another thing that you can do with them or a nice little tip that you can do is actually glug them in a liquid so what i do is i just hook that little bag on there onto my needle and then dip it, just chuck them into the bag. Dip them, now most liquids on the markets are PVA friendly, so make sure that they are obviously PVA friendly first. All of the liquids that we do at DNA, every single one of them is PVA friendly. And all, all it's a case of is just dip it inside, completely submerge it, like so. Just let it drain off a little bit. And you can just put that to one side and that will soak in all them juices into that PVA you can leave them there you don't you can even do this at home you know this is something that you don't just do whilst you're actually out on the session you can dip them in there unhook that pop it to one side get your next bag and all that does is just obviously put more attraction around these little parcels of pellets and then once that dries so pop that there you can do all of them i've got quite a few that are here get a few of those dipped in some liquid and even if you don't use them they'll be absolutely perfect for next time round and obviously them pellets they'll soak in all of that liquid enhancing them even further and of course when you put them out onto your baited area it's that something a little bit different again you know something that they've not seen a lot of most people they spot so you know most people use a midi spot, let's say. They don't use you know, that sort of size bait 
around their area. So you can put five or six of these into a zone with the liquid all over the top of them as well. And again, that's just something a little bit different with your pellets that not most people do. Oh, well, we spent the morning over in peg one, opposite, and typically, as soon as we got the rods out, I see one show over this side of the lake. Telltale sign that I'd got the swim choice wrong. Um, and as you can see, we're lent into one almost straight away from a move. So we've moved round to the opposite side of the lake, furthest walk and all that jazz to peg four and there's a sort of there's a bit of a sun trap just off of the concrete platform that's in front of this swim and straight away on the echo we see fish sort of gathered up in this little corner it's almost straight out in front of the peg saw the fish on the echo thought game on this this looks good so and within sort of 10 minutes of having the rod out middle rods ramped off the most favored one out of the three that I've dropped now I dropped the left hand one actually where I saw the fish show out in open water we had a liner on that straight away so you know we spent a couple of hours over there just wasting our lives away thinking I'm, and I just knew that we had to move and that move has paid off so far so let's hope we can get this one in which is on the boily crumb and the pellets and obviously on the Ronnie rig, which is fished on all three. But let's get this fish in and uh, get this day session underway. Wicked. Yeah, so like, like I've mentioned already, the fish in here are, are absolutely gorgeous. And I'm hoping that this is one of the old scaly mirrors that live in here because a lot of them are scaly and uh, they're absolutely beautiful they are really really nice carp fingers crossed this is one of them we haven't seen him yet he's stayed nice and deep in this margin here at the moment telltale sign that he's not a bad one. Oh, the other rod's going So I've actually fished two rods near this area where I've had the bite from. They're only probably a rod length apart from one another. And just had a couple of bleeps on that right hand rod. So sort of bricking it now that that one's going to ramp into life whilst we're bent into this one. <laughs> Which wouldn't be a bad thing, but I think when you're fishing up to a concrete structure like that, it might not be ideal, but concentrate on this one firstly before we start thinking of others <laughs> come on you oh yeah look at that man wow that is a proper creature oh yes yes <laughs> that will definitely do yeah lovely him he's a belter that is one of the scaly lovely ones that we've been talking about That's what we're talking about. <laughs> I 
Well, that's one of the many reasons why I love boilie and pellet fishing, because it catches your big uns like this one, all 31 pounds, 12 ounces of him. Mega, what a fish to start this trip off with. Oh yeah, buzzing with that one. And like I say, them telltale signs of just seeing that fish show this end of the pond was all I needed to tell me that this was where they're at. And the obvious, which is in my hands right now. Absolutely buzzing. Yes, what a carp. Let's hope there's some more of these Credence beasts to come. Wicked. <laughs> well, <laughs> one last look at that absolute Credence beast. Wicked. Right, just had a liner on the middle rod. We got him straight back out there again. So hopefully there's another one of his mates to come. <laughs> yes! Well, now when you are bait boat fishing, something, this isn't really a tip, but something to be more mindful about of when you're actually loading the boat, especially when you're using stuff like boily crumb or pellets that are in that boily mix, which have had liquid on them. They go very soft and spongy. You've got to be careful of obviously masking that hook point and fear of when you open up the hopper that the hook point may go into one of them bits of crumb or may go into one of them pellets and masking that hook point which then isn't going to hook you a fish efficiently so what i tend to do now most people would say well why don't you use just a bit of foam now i don't really like using foam if you don't get that right especially in the colder months when the water's freezing cold that foam can stay on for ages and if you're fishing a bit like what we are now where i'm dropping a rig in amongst fish I don't really want my rig sat up with a bit of white foam on there, sort of perhaps scaring the fish out of the area. I know you're going to be dropping the fish, uh, this rig in amongst fish, etc. But I just feel like if that's going to be sat up with a bit of foam on it and there's fish in the zone, that's more frightening to them than it all just fall into the deck straight away, how I feel anyway. So how I like to load my boat is obviously rigging everything in like you normally would. So let's pop the rig in there, pop the hopper shut, lay the rig out as straight as possible. And then what I do is where the hook is actually sat, is just get a handful of pellets, which haven't been soaked in liquid or anything. So just normal dry pellets like so. And just put them over the top of that hook point, And then that's the hook protected then. Now you can start loading the boat up, with your boily mix, with your crumb mix, and all your bits on top. If you're perhaps using maggots, etc., I would still do something like this. You know, if you're gonna use anything that may get that hook point mass, always cover it with a solid item like pellets. And then that way, you know every single time that once that rig's dropped in the water, it's gonna be fishing as efficiently as possible. Now, another useful tip for when using boilies, especially if you're going to France and you're going to be taking a freezer bait out there and you may need to dry your bait out. And why you would do that is so that it doesn't go off. Now, some places don't have freezers for you to put your freezer baits into. And even with a shelf life bait, if you leave them out in the sun, a bit like what I've done here on this trip, although these are frozen baits, I've left them out in the sun. And as you can see, they're just looking a little bit dried out and not as fresh as they were when they first come out the bag. So a decent tip to get around this is to get a bucket of your boilies, fill the bucket up for as many boilies as you've got. You can do this even if you've got 10, 20 or 30 kilos, get yourself a few buckets and at least have, I would say about, if they're eight millers, I've only got a centimetre of water above them. If you're using 18 millers, I would say you'd probably want a couple of inches of water at the very least above these. Now you don't want too much water in the bucket because what you're gonna do is rehydrate them with a liquid. Now, if you've got too much water in, the liquid will dilute in the water and you're not gonna get the most out of that enhancer that you're gonna put back into the boilie. So be mindful about how much water you're gonna put in there. Like so with these eight millers, I've only got about a centimeter of water above them. Next up, once you've put your water in, grab your liquid. Now you want a more soluble liquid, really. You don't want something like the Hydro Spot 
where it's a very thick and gloopy. You want something that, as you can see with that there, this is a liquid food, perfect for rehydrating baits like this. So grab your liquid. You can never overdo it with this because you've got X amount of water in your bucket. Just pour your liquid in as much as you like in there. And then that will rehydrate them baits. It will make them softer. And even if you've got wary carp out there, you know, that you're almost washing a bait out but you're putting back into the bait what's been dried out of it, if you get my gist. So by putting that liquid into that water, the baits are gonna be soaking it in because they're obviously dried out within the sun. And then once that water takes on inside the bait, it's gonna take on the liquid as well. And then that will just re-enhance them boilies furthermore for you. Not only that, it's more of a preservative as well. So if you've got a long trip, so you're out in France for a week, you could do this at the start of the trip. As long as them baits are submerged in that liquidy water, then they're not gonna go off. It's competition time. And like we said at the start of the video, you've got a chance of winning some Camo Mini Micron X Alarms. They come in a set of three with a receiver as well. All you have to do to be in with a chance of winning this awesome prize is these three simple things. Like this video, subscribe to the Fox YouTube channel and answer this simple question. What venue have I been fishing today? Answer in the comments below, the very best of luck. Well, as you can see behind me, the light is fading rapidly, unfortunately, as of always, this time of year, but spring is only just round the corner. I'm thoroughly looking forward to it, as I'm sure you all are as well. 31 pounder on a day session, you'll definitely take that. And hopefully you'll take some of my tips that I've shown you about boilie and pellet fishing, put them into your own angling, and hopefully you catch yourself a few beautiful fish like that one as well. Remember the competition that we're running as well. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to be in with a chance of winning them Camo Micron X Alarms. Till next time, see you very soon.